<laughs> if you're not educated enough on how to buy a property the right way, then you need to educate yourself before you step into a real estate business because you'll quickly go broke. If you know how to look for opportunities and solve problems, which is what we do, then the market doesn't matter at that yeah. point. Honestly, I'm just a risk taker uh, okay. and I've, I've flipped over 2000 houses. So I kind of know what I'm doing at yeah. this point. It is not for a beginner. I've only lost money on two deals in my entire investing career, which okay. equated to a hundred grand. Yeah. And I've made millions of dollars as an investor in 20 something years that I've been doing this. No air. I am so excited to be here with Jamel Gibbs. This is actually the second time I've had a chance to talk to you and you have grown and changed so much since the last time we talked, but you are just a wealth of knowledge, actual entrepreneur, really doing real estate, really doing deals, and more importantly, sharing all of this great information to people. Your YouTube channel now has over 140,000 subscribers. So what have you been up to, Jamel? Talk to me. Hey, you know, well, I'm just uh, being Jamel, uh, <laughs> doing deals and just trying to help people along the way. That's, yeah. that's pretty much what I've been up to. How about yourself? I love it. I love it. So let's talk about it. Let's get, really get into it. So you have a video called How to Buy Your First Rental Property, Even If You're Broke, Over 2.6 Million Views. Tell my audience, talk about us. What are you teaching in that video? Because everybody loves it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that video has done really well for me and my channel. Uh, I'll be yeah. honest, it was inspired by one of your videos. Uh, you have a video on YouTube that has a similar effect, similar approach to it. Yeah. I guess it would be a similar title. But what I did was um, I incorporated creative finance into it. Talk to and me. What's creative finance? So you do deals. I do deals. We all, that's what, this is one of the things we talk about. There is abundance. There are so many real estate deals. One person cannot do all the deals. So kind of tell me some of the differences. Yeah. Obviously, I know some ways because I was broke. I was living in my parents' basement when I started investing. But yours, like you said, goes more about the creative financing. So kind of talk yeah. about some of those things that you've done and that you're teaching on because that is incredible. Yeah. So that particular video, I focus on seller financing. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do creative financing. You have subject to wraps and, you know, you have land contracts and, you know, you have seller financing in general. All of those are different forms of seller financing. But in this particular video that we're talking about, uh, I, I taught how to use seller financing in order to be able to buy your first rental property. So uh, in essence, all I, all I did was teach you exactly what seller financing was, how it will allow you to avoid going to a bank to get a loan. Instead, you use the seller as the bank. Uh, start making monthly payments to the seller through a third party company so that both of you guys are protected. And then uh, you can you can have a choice at that point to either keep the property or you can go ahead and resell it. And that's exactly what I taught in that video. I, I taught how to sell the property through something called a rent to own or a lease option. Right. Uh, so what that allows you to do is collect a large sum of money up front, collect money every month and then collect back in profits as well. So it's an easy way for somebody to get involved in real estate investing without having to uh, have a lot of money, without having to have that credit and, and things that you think you need yeah. uh, in order to invest in real estate. But what yeah. it would allow you to do is get profitable relatively quickly if you mm -hmm. put in the work, obviously, yeah. and also uh, create some passive income for yourself every single month. I love it. I love it. I love it. So you're right. There's so many different types of seller financing type of situations. One of my favorites that I was able to amass my portfolio was subject to. Mm -hmm. And obviously just kind of taking over payments and that whole system of taking over the payments, but getting the deed in my name. That was one of the big things that I wanted to make sure that I did. So with seller financing, kind of talk to the people that don't really know there's so many benefits to yeah. not having to go to the bank, to not having to show those tax returns, to not having to you know, I show your income and your assets and to get properties that already have equity in it. What are, so what are some of the things that you have found that really builds wealth with seller financing? Well, the, the beautiful, one of the beautiful parts about seller financing is like you said, you don't have to go to the bank to get a yeah. loan, right? Yeah. So most people who want to get started in real estate, I don't want to say most people, but a good number of people who want to get started in real estate, they don't have a lot of money, may not have a lot of credit. Yeah. Right. So if you contact the seller and, and just 
so you guys can understand the difference between the different types of seller finance. And if you're going to go to seller financing route, the property needs to be free and clear. Mm. If you're going to go to subject to route, it's okay for the property to have a mortgage. That's the difference between those types of seller financing opportunities, right? So you have one where the property needs to be free and clear. That's a true seller finance deal. That's the original type of uh, seller finance opportunity. Subject to means that the property has a mortgage on it and you're going to be taking over payments, right? right? So what we're talking about here is that free and clear opportunity. So uh, that goes to show if you guys are looking for leads, if you're looking for deals, find properties that may not have a mortgage, but maybe they need a little bit of work and you can offer uh, an opportunity for the seller to get out of that type of distress so that you can create uh, a winning opportunity for both of you guys. But uh, there's a lot of benefits to seller financing. So uh, number one, uh, you, you you have choices, right? Okay. So you can talk to me because people, everybody loves choices. You know what I mean? Yeah. With subject two, you get the mortgage that you get. And one of the reasons why I'm always talking subject two is because there's a lot of low interest mortgage payments. People are past due. I can, I can kind of work my magic with those people. So I haven't really done as many free and clear. You know what I mean? I, mm -hmm. I'm taking over the payment. So this is, this is completely different than what I'm usually doing. So absolutely. So Usually with, with a seller finance opportunity, you have um, the ability to create your own interest rate. So a lot of these deals that I take over, I'm usually creating call, uh, what, what's called equal monthly payments, which means 0% seller financing. Okay. Right? So if I go to a seller and I say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm willing to make you an offer on this property. I can pay you what you're asking for, but in exchange for that, here's the monthly payment that I need. And I'll pay it off within X amount of, you know, months. Usually okay. I'll, I'll negotiate through months versus years because months sounds better than years. It's a psychological thing. Right, but, right, right. Um, at the end of the day, I'm usually negotiating seller finance at a 0% interest rate. If we're adding interest to the mortgage, what's going to happen is I'm looking at whatever the market is and I'm trying to cut it in half. So if today's interest rate is, let's say 7%, I'm trying to get it between three and 4%. So you really, unlike going to the bank where you can't negotiate your interest, you have to accept what the bank is willing to provide you. With mm -hmm. seller financing, you can literally create your own opportunity, your own interest rate, just by negotiating directly with the seller. A lot of times, again, if you talk about equal monthly payments versus you know, um, you know what the seller wants every single month, you can negotiate a 0% interest rate. So if I go to Zillow, for example, and I see that, you know, a property can rent for 1500 bucks, just throwing mm -hmm. a number out there, I might go to the seller and say, hey, how about I offer you $800 a month in equal monthly installments for 10 years, and then yeah, I'll pay off the property. 120 months. <laughs> 120 months, right. exactly. You know what I mean? So- <laughs> Um, that's kind of how you negotiate the seller finance types of opportunities, but other benefits that come along with it, you still get the same benefits as you would if you were to buy through a bank. So you get the tax benefits, the uh, appreciating value, you get the depreciation, you get the cash flow and all of these other things that come with buying a regular rental through a bank. Yeah. The difference is you're saving money by going directly to the seller. I love and it. And you're getting out of, you're getting a seller out of whatever situation because right. I'm focused on distressed real estate. I'm getting right. a seller out of whatever situation they're right. in. So I'm helping a seller as well. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And this is again why I absolutely love real estate. And I tell people there's so many room for so many different people to do different things. And especially if you focus in on what you're good at, because I have been through foreclosure. I could easily talk to people that were right. in foreclosure and start taking over those payments. It just kind of just worked for me. And so how did you get into the seller financing, these free and clear properties? How did you get into that? That's a really good question. So I started off in the business back in 2002 as a fix and flip investor um, okay. and a real estate broker at that time as well. Um, I did really well my first five years in the business, made a whole lot of money. Um, the problem was back in 07 and 08, when the market shifted, I had too much money out there and I couldn't sell a house. Right. So I ended up foreclosing on uh, one of my houses and I ended up losing money on another house, but I didn't foreclose on it. I did pay the lender back the money. Nice. Um, so around that time, I had to start wholesaling 
which is another form of real estate investing. And I had to find creative ways of doing deals. So I accidentally did my first lease option deal um, just by negotiating with the seller, creating an opportunity. Yeah. You only get what you ask for. True. right? So yeah. I, I didn't know what I was doing, right. um, but I ended up negotiating a lease option deal. And that kind of led into seller finance opportunities and things like that. I actually knew a guy uh, who owned like 120 seller finance deals back then. Um hey. And he was investing in notes. And okay. that's kind of how I got introduced to the seller finance world. I love it. I love it. So one of the things I also love about you, Jamel, is that you cheer, you're like me in that sense that we want to tell people, you know, yeah. this is what I do. This is how I made money. This is what happened to me. And this is how I came out of it. So if someone wanted to learn or you have any courses or books, how would they find? I know you got that Deal Pro Academy. Talk to me about yeah. what is Deal Pro Academy? DealProAcademy.com. <laughs> um, so on the Deal Pro Academy, I just created three brand new courses. I have a wholesaling mastery I have a fix and flip mastery program as well as a cash flow investing mastery. And okay. along with that, I have this creative finance course and an auction course that comes along with it. I'm, I'm huge in, in my local area uh, as an auction investor. I buy multiple at a time. Oh, okay. So where are you again? Remind everybody. I'm in North Carolina. I'm in North Carolina. Okay, I'm from what Brooklyn. part of North Carolina? North Carolina is a big state. Are you Fayetteville? You Charlotte? You Raleigh? I'm in Greensboro. In? I'm in Greensboro. Greensboro. I've been here for okay. 10 years. So I'm originally from Brooklyn, as you know. I lived in Pennsylvania for eight years, and, and now I'm here in Greensboro, North Carolina. So uh, I do a, a ton of investing here and outside uh, of this local area. I buy in an entire state, pretty much. But uh, as far as fixing and flipping, I'm within 30 to 45 minutes of where I live. And I, I buy multiple at a time. So if you got any okay. deals, send it over. Will um, do. Will do. Okay. So Deal Pro Academy. I love it. You have some great courses. And what I love about it too is this wholesaling, fixing, and flipping and cash flow. So basically, what we what I was taught was deal compounding. So when I was broke, right. bankrupt, I did wholesaling because I had bad credit. Then once I got my money up, then I could do some fixing and flipping. So because obviously wholesaling, you make about five thousand dollars per deal, but with fixing and flipping, you're gonna make sixty five thousand dollars per right. average on an average deal. And then obviously cash flow, rental properties, that's gonna build your wealth because those properties are going up in value over time. So I absolutely love that education that ladder of it. And then the auctions. So let's talk about the auctions because that's something I love. I do. I stop doing. I do. I stop doing. So talk to me about these auctions. Like how can people really get into these auctions? Do you do the tax auctions? Talk, talk to me about the auctions. What's your strategy? I have multiple ways of uh, buying through auctions, but you know, ideally the easiest way for someone to get started in the auction business is simply to do it online to be honest with you. And the reason for that is because it's literally at the click of a button, right? So I don't necessarily go downtown anymore. Every single auction property I buy, uh, in fact, the last 20 or so that I've bought have been right online. Uh, you can, when it comes to auction properties, you really want to be careful. You want to know your numbers before you go in. So yeah. you want to know your comps. You want to know how much work a property needs. And the caveat to that is you, you can't get into these properties in advance. So you got to really know how to estimate your repairs. I just yeah. released a video, if you don't, shameless plug. Um, I just released a video yesterday on how I actually estimate repairs. All right, on, put a link to that one. <laughs> yeah, so if, if honestly, if you just follow the formula that I'm talking about in that video, you'll yeah. get a rough idea. It's not going to be 100% accurate. Right. Um, I'll just give you an example. I'm, I'm flipping a house right now with $20,000 over budget, okay. right? But- I'm still going to make like 80 to 100 grand on the house. So for me, there was enough breathing room in it to where I can actually, you know, it, that $20,000 didn't mean anything, right? The reason why we're over budget is because the house had a foundation issue that was unforeseeable unless you walked into the property. Right. And again, with these auction deals, they don't yeah. allow you to walk in. So you got to know yeah. your numbers or yeah. get relatively close to it before you actually walk in. Yeah. I'm also buying these houses at 30 to 40 cents on a dollar. So right. I'm buying them low enough yeah. and paying cash for them. Yeah. And, and the price that I'm picking them up at is, is you know, it's going to allow me to have a lot of breathing room in a yeah. property. So it doesn't matter uh, if I pay a little bit more than what I should, or if the if the budget is a little higher than what it should be, I'm still right. going to make a profit on these houses. Yeah. yeah. 
And see, that's the thing with auctions. That's why I said you, you made a great point that we got to delve into just a little bit more. Because I cannot see inside of the property, I just have never been able to really go all yeah. in at that being my strategy. Now, the auctions where it's just tax liens and I know I'm just going to get different? my money. You know what I'm saying? Like three, six months, you know, I'm getting six yeah. percent or whatever, you know, so really passive, no risk, really probably not getting the house. I had never, ever, not even one time got the house because <laughs> yeah. they always redeem it during the redemption period. So the auctions, because that that's the thing. So talk, like, how did you get into like, okay, I can deal with this level of risk? Because to me, that was just like, man, I, I yeah. got it. I'd rather, I'd rather just do my numbers. Like I'm more of a numbers Understood. person than an animation person. So how'd you get yeah. into that and, get, and say, you know what, it's worth the risk? Honestly, I'm just a risk taker. Uh, okay. And I've, I've flipped over 2000 houses. So I kind of know what I'm doing at yeah. this point. It is not for a beginner. I will say that because, be, uh, you know, as a beginner, especially getting into the rehabbing portion of the business, be right. very, very careful if you can't walk into a house. Do a few rehabs before you, you know, get your numbers down as a rehabber I before you try to do these types of deals sight unseen. I uh, agree. Or have a good deal, mentor like yourself or someone that really knows. Have somebody to show you how to do it. That's probably the best way to do it yeah. because if okay. not, you're going to, you know... I, my first one that I've ever done sight unseen, I lost eighty thousand dollars on. Yeah. Right. And <laughs> that's a lot to say because I've only lost money on two deals in my entire investing career, Love which that. equated to a hundred grand. Yeah. And I've made millions of dollars as an investor in yeah. twenty something years that I've been doing this. Yeah. So truth be told, you know, I did lose money on that first one. And it was because I paid it was a seven thousand square foot home. Um, I paid sixty five thousand dollars for it. I thought it was a steal. And I walked into the house and needed more work than I anticipated. Okay. Uh, what killed me on that was the monthly payments. I was paying like $4,000 a month for the property. And right. I just couldn't get ahead. Every time I try to rehab something, something else happened. So I ended up selling it at a loss. Um, and I, I wrote the the uh, interest payments off of my taxes. So was it really a loss? Probably not. Right. So it, let's talk about that loss. because there are just so many benefits to real estate investing. Not yeah. only do you have obviously cash flow, people know about, you know, you buy property with lots of equity. Obviously, you have appreciation of property going up in value over time. But I think another really big one that people miss out on is all of the tax write offs, you know, the yeah. writing off all the expenses, all of the rehab, all of the this plus the depreciation. So what is it that kind of got you into to to real estate as like your thing? I know that we all have our own origin stories. You know, some yeah. of us are all different type of hustles. And then we realized this was the one for us. Or we always just love real estate. I know you started off a broker, but how did you get into real estate and add more so, more importantly, as an investor in real estate? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So back in 2000, so I graduated high school in 99. I didn't go to college. Um, I was offered a position as a cold caller on Wall Street. Uh, this is in Manhattan. I, yeah. I worked at this company uh, to become a broker, uh, which took me about a little over a year. So back in not back in 2001, 9-11-ish, oh, two weeks before that, I became a broker at this company on Wall Street. Uh, the planes hit the towers. I was down there that day. I experienced the whole thing. The company went out of business because everybody was pulling their, their, their investments out of the company. And I had to find something else to do. So I had a friend who was uh, in, in real estate in Brooklyn uh, he introduced me to the real estate business, and that's how I got started. You okay. know, within two weeks after the 9-11 era, I yeah. started my my investment in uh, brokering journey, and yeah. then just kind of took it from there. I made a lot of money. So again, I was 21 when I started. Yeah. By the time I was 25, I was pretty well off, yeah. um, but I wasn't spending money. It's the best way to explain this. I, I wasn't money savvy. Yeah. So, I would make a lot of money, but I was spending a lot of and money. A lot of money. Yeah. I was yeah. broke. I, was, I made a million. I was a, I had a million dollars worth of real estate by the time I was 25. You were a millionaire. Uh, 27, yeah. I was broke. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I had to funny, make it. I talk about millionaire because there's three different ways a person could be a millionaire. Obviously, you can have cash a millionaire. millionaire. Yep. After, you, can have, you can earn a million dollars a year or yeah. you can have a million dollars in cash. And the first way that I became a millionaire was the same way that you did with assets. With real, real estate. estate. Asset. Right. It's in there. 
So that is so, it's funny that you, you use that equity wisely. So one of the things that I saw that you're teaching now, like I said, you have an amazing YouTube channel. You got a lot of followers on Instagram and things like that. One of the videos you've been talking about or the topic you've been talking about now that I absolutely love is kind of pulling out some of that equity through a HELOC yeah. and yeah. then getting more property. So talk about how you kind of came into that strategy, how that works, so people understand the power of this. Yeah, so what, what I like about HELOCs and, and just to give credit, you know, I have a couple of friends that you, you may have seen on my channel as well. I, I really got educated on HELOCs by just having longer conversations with them and kind of surrounding myself with them. Yeah. But, um, you know, the thing I love about HELOCs is you can take the equity out of your property, use the equity, pay the equity back off, use the equity, pay it back off. It's not like a refinance where you're pulling out uh -huh. all of the money and changing the rate on a property, you can keep your initial note on the property and just simply use the HELOC and it's a separate entity. Now I can use my equity in order to get richer yep. while keeping my initial note in place. It's not affecting this at all. So if you got a property back in like 2015 and your interest rate is let's say three and a half percent interest where today's is like what, seven to 8%, yep. something crazy. I think I just refinanced the house, uh, yeah, a month ago, a brand new Airbnb that we have, my interest rate is like close to 8%. Yeah. Um, if I would have bought that same property back then, not only would I have paid less for the property, but my interest rate would reflect the market from back then. Right. Um, I can use the HELOC money in order to be able to not affect the interest rate that I have right now, but use that in order to make money and then pay it off. And it's kind of like a credit card, right? So you use it. It's like a revolving line of credit, but you can use it. You can pay it off. You can use it. You can pay it off. Uh, what I would do with the HELOC money is simply flip. I wouldn't necessarily let that money sit for a long period of time. You want turnaround and then you refinance the money back out of the next property and you keep doing the same thing. That's how you can build wealth today. So yeah. uh, it's probably a lot of words Right no, there, it's amazing. amazing. And again, very educational. And I think people hear that you can use real estate to build wealth, but they're not really understanding how you can tap into that equity and how that appreciation affects that thing too. And the more the property right. is going to value, the more equity you have, the more equity you can pull out and get even more real estate and how, you know, again, success begets success. So yeah. Uh, so, and one more thing with that, when it comes to HELOCs, a lot of people use HELOCs to do foolish things, right? So they may pull out, you know, money pull out equity from their property. And then what they'll do with the, with the equities, they're going to fix the property up, right? You're not getting that money back, right? So you're simply paying money, paying more than what you were, what you, what you were initially paying on your mortgage uh, on the HELOC. And you're, you, you, you lock that equity up into something that's not going to bring you more money. So rather than doing that, you can create more income by simply using the HELOC to buy more real estate, or more assets that's going to bring more cash flow to you and keep freeing that money up. Yeah. To me, that's the best way to use a HELOC. I agree. I agree. And then another point to that is the interest rates on, on HELOCs are definitely lower than, you know, even some business cards and business lines of credits and things like that. And like you said, you use it. And then as you pay it, it frees it back up and you really can't just keep reusing that HELOC over and over again, at least right. usually 10 years, at least minimal. So, okay. I absolutely love it. Again, deal pro Academy, Dot com. You can go to force, you know, use forward slash Noel so that, um, you know, uh, Jamel knows that Noel sent you. You have some amazing education. So one last question before we go, because, again, I love the diversity. of thought. I love that there's so many of us out here really showing what we're doing, really being entrepreneurs, really being in this real estate game and more importantly, helping our community with this information. So I'm a big believer in learn, do, teach. So on your channel, I saw there was a video where I had made about stop buying houses and you had kind of gave your reaction. And I was like, yes, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it because there's so many different opinions and that is so welcome to me. So I had made a video at the time, interest rates again, 8%. And I was like, don't buy the houses the traditional way. And you kind of have some opinions. So let's talk about that because I really still have not been buying houses the traditional way because mm -hmm. the interest rates are so high. I have mm -hmm. been doing like what you just said a second ago, targeting people that got those mortgages in 2014 and 2015 because they have those really low interest rates and I can just take over their mortgage payments. But obviously you are still buying houses and you just said you just closed them when you're doing an Airbnb. So what is your take on it for those who have not seen this video with Jamel's thoughts on Noel's opinion. <laughs> yeah, you should actually link that. I was actually bigging you up 
in that video. <laughs> I thought what you were talking about was spot on. Um, yeah. But as far as buying houses at, you know, the uh, traditional interest rate, yeah. you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, I think that when you're purchasing real estate, though, you know, the way that I buy it, I buy distressed real estate. So whether it's financially or physically distressed, same way you buy it. Right. right? So we're buying it at a discount. If you know up front when you're working your numbers, mm -hmm. if you know that the property is not going to cash flow for you, because you want to look at what's the profitability margin on the property before you actually buy it. So can I make a profit if I flip it? Can I make okay. a profit if I keep it? Will it cash flow? Right. Yeah. If you're looking at the numbers, to me, the interest rate doesn't matter at that point. Right. If if I if I go into a property and I know I'm going to make twenty five hundred bucks a month through Airbnb, I'm buying that property all day long. Right. 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 If I look at a property and I see that I'm going to be in a negative up front, then I'm going to be careful. Well, let's talk about that for a second, because there are people that like really came against me. You're right. You did kind of agree with me on some of the points, but I really some people have really came and was like, no. And here is their point. And I have to. That's why I kind of agree with it, too. Mm -hmm. In our community. OK, I'm just going to talk about African-American community. Mm -hmm. We obviously are behind in home ownership. OK. And so you have a person, let's just say they're 25 years old. They're getting all these messages from people saying, do not buy a house, do not buy a house. Mm -hmm. and, and I kind of don't think that's true for our community because we we have to start buying real estate with that. That's part of how we're going to gain power. You know what I mean? Without getting into anything political or anything mm -hmm. like that. But, you know, the, you have to be an owner. You can't be, you know, beholden to landlords all the time and actually hold power. So there is this conflict or this 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 kind of argument against like, yeah, no matter what the interest rate is, some groups, we got to keep buying houses. What do you think if about yeah, if you're not educated enough on yeah. how to, I think that education plays a major part in this, right? So if you're, not, it, yes. <laughs> if you're not educated enough on how to buy a property the right way, then yeah. you need to educate yourself before you step into a real estate business because you'll quickly go broke, yeah. right? If you know that you're buying opportunities, so that's mm. the difference. So Noel and I, we buy opportunities. We don't just buy any house. We have to know that there's opportunity in the property. If right. you're smart enough to understand, or if you have somebody like Noel and I show you how to do this, yeah. then buying the opportunity will prevent you to have to worry about the market. Right? right. So I don't necessarily worry about market conditions because I'm always buying at a right. discount. Right? right. I'm always getting a deal. So right. sometimes I may pay market value for a house. Yeah. Right. But again, I'm creating an opportunity where I know. Going back to the seller finance situation, I'm creating a zero percent interest to me. I can pay market value if I'm paying if, if I'm not paying any interest on the house. It's still right. going to cash flow. Right. right. So if you understand how to the appreciation is going to go up in value and you're it's not going to go up in value five percent per year anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. if you know how to look for opportunities and solve problems, which is what we do then the market doesn't matter at that yeah, point, right? right. What, what matters more than anything is just educating yourself on how to structure deals, how to put stuff together that's going to create winning opportunities for you. And you're not trying to take advantage of sellers, right? right. So what you're doing is you're creating opportunities that's going to allow the seller to get out of the problem that we just spoke about and allow you the opportunity to profit. So you're yeah. profiting from, from problems. That's what you're doing. Well, let's right. talk about that point, because somebody said this to me and I had to kind of concede to this point. They said, OK, we understand that in the black community that there are there's a higher rate of foreclosure. OK, mm -hmm. but the but we buy foreclosures. Well, there's a reason for that, too. But yeah, know, we can talk yeah. about that if you want. Correct. We can talk about <laughs> that. <laughs> right. And again, a lot of it is, is, you know, you don't know what you don't know. You know, if, if this right. information was hidden from you, if there were laws designed against you, of yep. course, then you're going to be behind the eight ball. So you're right about that part. Um, but the argument was. Am I saying that because this is kind of what they were saying to me, am I saying that just so I could then buy their foreclosures? And I was trying to explain mm. what you just said, like, well, we're really creating win win situations because the truth of the matter is you have to live somewhere. Right. We all have to live somewhere, whether it's a tiny home, a mobile home, uh, but we're not going to be living in an app. We're not going to be living in a computer. So at some point we have to 
think about that, where we're, we're going to live and where we're paying to live. So even if you buy a house at market value and at a market value rate, the danger of you going into foreclosure is always going to exist the same like when you're renting to get evicted. Exactly. If we're a stronger community and there is the Jamel Gibbs and there's the Noel Randalls and there's the this person and that person where you don't actually even have to go into foreclosure. That's right. Actually, actually we're actually still pushing the community forward. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, we're, we're absolutely pushing the community forward. Um, think about it like this. So not only so in my case, right? Yeah. So when I buy a house, a lot of times if I'm negotiating with the seller, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not in the business of convincing grown people on what to do with their time, with their money, with anything, right? I'm in the business of helping people. Oh, New York. <laughs> right? Right? So <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> You're not in the so, business of that, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm, so I'm in the business of helping people at the right. end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to convince you out of your property. If you're going into foreclosure, foreclosure, you're going to lose the house to the bank right. or you can sell it to me and make a little bit of money right. or... You know, uh, credit or something like there's going to be some benefit. Right. right. Versus there's going to be a benefit everything. to working with me. So yeah. and, and then in addition to that, I'm providing additional services to help you get housing somewhere else. So, uh, again, we're in the business of helping people. We're not trying to steal any properties from anybody. Uh, look, if, if I don't buy it, somebody else is going to pay less at the right. end of the day. Right. right. So you I might as well sell. You might as well sell it to me. No. Might as well. That's what I tell people too. I'm like, you rather give the bank back the down payment, all the payments you've made, or worst case scenario, you're risking me paying the mortgage. You know, those are some of the, the pitches that, you know, I'm explaining to people. So I absolutely love this. Like I said, you are a wealth of knowledge. Again, deal pro academy forward slash Noel. You need to get one of those courses. I know they're absolutely amazing. And again, it is an amazing strategy. So before we go, anything else you want to say, Jamel? Yeah, I want to add one more thing. The way you buy property, subject to, right? Yeah. To me, that is the epitome of helping people, right? So how are you helping somebody? You're preventing them from going to foreclosure, taking over their payments. Although you're getting ownership of the property, this person can have an opportunity to buy another house relatively right. quickly. Right. right. So I just wanted to add that to that because yeah, that's super I appreciate that. I, cause I, and I explain that to them. I'm like, you go into foreclosure, you're four years like yeah. <laughs> Even yeah, FHA you can prevent now, that. I'm like, <laughs> right. 10 so, years on your credit report. Like, it's not fun. I've been there. That's not what you want. <laughs> I have as well. Trust me. I, I, you know, I've been bankrupt. I've, I've been in foreclosure before because of the 08 crisis, you know, and I'm, I had to get, get myself out of it. But we still made money over the years because, yeah. again, you know, if I stress this, if I haven't done it already, we're in the business of helping people solve problems. If you can solve problems, you'll always make money That's at the right. end of the day. I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jamel. This has been amazing. Again, Deal Pro Academy, and I'll put the um, links in the bio.